guys, what's up? Um, I just wanted to do this video really quick and just get on here and tell you um, that just something I had on my mind a little bit. And this is going to be kind of different than I normally do. And I want you to know that I am not in any way preaching. I just heard this song and this came to my mind. So, um, I was listening to the song... Um, I can't remember what it's called now. I'm so ill prepared. I'm sorry, guys. Okay. I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> Call, call, called. I can't talk either. This is going to be great. Anyway, the bridge or the chorus or some part of the song, Jeremy will laugh at me for that because I never, I never call him the right one. Anyway, I think it's a bridge. It says, um, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. And it repeats that a lot. And I know some people don't like that. And I love it. But anyway, um, it just builds and builds and builds. And it really, really spoke to me. And it got me to thinking about my life and um, things that have happened. And, and you know, um, I imagined, like, when God let the devil test Job and God said, you know, you can you can take anything, you can do anything to him, but you can't take his life. And and the devil did some really bad stuff to him. I mean, really. If you haven't read it, go and read the book of Job. And it's just heart-wrenching. It is hard to fathom. It is hard to even imagine. And yet Job still said, blessed be the name of the Lord. And it's just got me to thinking that about my life and it's like I just imagine that like God you know letting the devil test me or letting the devil um, give me trials and give me and I just imagined um, God saying yeah you know you can't hurt her but kind of like with Job you know you Go ahead and try, you know. She's one of mine. But you go ahead and you do what you think you need to do. And and I just imagine that the devil gave me this horrible, horrible um, burden of infertility. And, and it almost broke me many times, guys. And, and I just imagine that just God looking down and him just being broken for me because it says in the Bible that Jesus wept and and so I can just imagine his heart breaking he's like oh he had to do that didn't he you know like oh and you know if there's anything this woman wants it's to be a mother she's always wanted that and and I imagine that he was sad for me and maybe I'm completely wrong on this you probably do think I'm nuts and that's okay um I just it's just how I imagine it. And, and and the devil's thinking, I got her. You know, she's going to get so bitter and she's going to get so mad at God. And there's no way God can turn this for his good because all this girl wants is to be a mother. And let me say that I finally got to a place, and I've talked about this in my infertility video, but I finally got to a place with God where I was like, it's okay. If you don't want me to be a mother, I'm yours. It's okay. You want to talk to him? Buddy old pal's here. We obviously know that that is not the case. And so I, I, I imagine that the devil thinks he's got me, right? The devil thinks I've done it, you know? Come over here. And then this guy shows up. And God had a plan. And I imagine those words just being the anthem of my life. God took what the enemy meant for evil and he turned it for good. No, I cannot biologically have a child. But God, and so I had, I had everything medically saying there's no way. It's not possible. Pause. I can't even talk. It's not possible. Medically, it will not happen. It's not going to happen. So, medically... I should not be a mother. It wasn't going to be in the cards for me. It wasn't going to happen. But God, in His infinite grace and in His mercy and in His in His love for me and in His love for Him, 
he took what the enemy meant for evil and he turned it for good. And he made me a mother, though the odds were stacked against me. And so I just, I think about that. And when I hear that bridge, that's where it takes yeah. me. And, you know, it makes me a sobbing, ugly mess. But it makes me grateful for the way my life turned out. And it makes me grateful that God can take what the enemy means for evil. And he can turn it for our good. And I just... I think about that, and it makes me emotional, and it makes me wrecked, and it's just, it's, huh. and it's just so powerful to know that God stepped in, and he said, yeah, you're right, medically, maybe not, but I am God, and, and I can do all things, and again, if God had wanted it to happen biologically, he'd have made it happen, I have no doubt, but we have Connor, and, and because he did it that way, not only did we get our prayers answered, but, you know, when we got to Hong Kong, all those workers kept talking about us being the answer to our prayers, us being the answer to our prayers. And we're looking at Connor and we're like, no, he's the answer to our prayers. What are y'all talking about? And they said, we have prayed that God would send him a mom and dad and you are the answer. And it is going to get me also to tour up here because it is so unfathomable to know that I am the answer to someone's prayer. And that's how our story intertwined and that's how our story worked. Not only did he take what the enemy meant for evil and turn it for good, but he used two lives to totally change, or three I guess. I was counting mine and Jeremy as one, but he took mine and Jeremy's life, and not only did he change it, but he answered our prayers, but this orphanage, all these workers praying for this child, he answered their prayers for him, and and then, and then it just snowballs, you know, the snowball effect, because our family's lives had changed, and our, you know, and so many people who were praying for us, and so many people's lives have changed because of Connor and because of our story. And that's why I'm very open with our story. I know a lot of people think I shouldn't be. A lot of people think I share too much. But if I can help one person, that's what I want to do. So I want you to believe that the enemy can take... The enemy can't take it. Let me think. <laughs> God can take what the enemy meant for evil and he can turn it for good. He can spin it. He can change it. He's God and he can do anything. And that's certainly what he did for us. And we are so grateful. And it's just an overwhelming feeling to know that um, it, if you look at it from a medical standpoint, point, I shouldn't be a mother. But God, he stepped in. And I know so many others have that story and a lot of them ended up um, birth and babies and that's amazing too it's just you know the story played out different for us and but we're glad and I know um, a lot of people have a hard time understanding that and a lot of people have a hard time saying well how can you still sit here and and be happy but yet act like you're still broken over infertility infertility still hurts my heart y'all um, there is nothing I'm sorry. There is nothing I would love more than to experience pregnancy and to experience all these things. But I wouldn't change how it played out because I have Connor. And I know that people are going to say, well, you can adopt and still have kids biologically. And you absolutely can. But had that played out that way, I don't know that we would have had Connor Thaddeus Malone with this specific child just because of the years and when he was born and what was going on and I hope that makes sense um, and so it needed to happen how it happened and isn't that how God is he he makes our lives happen and if we can step back from the brokenness from the sadness from the despair from the discouragement and actually take a look we can see God's handprints in everything you know um, when we first started the adoption journey, um, there was another little boy that we moved forward and we wanted to adopt. And it ended up being like almost this battle between us and another family. And they were asking us questions and they were um, trying to figure out who would be the better fit for this child. And ultimately, they ended up choosing the other family. And I was broken. I was crushed. And, you know... Um, 
now I can see why and I can see it was all for Connor it was all for this boy um, he was our baby and um, again we didn't have our eye and y'all know my adoption story I'm getting off on a soapbox and I apologize but I gotta say it y'all know why we didn't um, in the beginning pursue Connor and it was because he had Down syndrome because we were so scared of a life of unknown, of a life of we weren't that educated on Down syndrome and and all the medical that comes with it and those things. And so um, God changed our heart. God changed our minds. And He can do that. And He alone um, can just change you from the inside out. And He things you would never fathom doing or places you would never fathom fathom going you know he can change you to where the next thing you know there you are and this life is not easy I'm not going to tell you it is there is so many just heartbreaking excruciating moments I'm not going to act like there isn't there is and but God alone is faithful and God has um, just changed us and and although life is more difficult, life is not what I envisioned. You know, when I was a young girl picturing my family, life is perfect. Life is what I never knew I always wanted. And um, Down syndrome isn't scary. And I know I'm getting on like this huge soapbox and I apologize. I just wanted to hop on here because I am just, that song come on and it just got me fired up, guys, because... I'm just like, oh man, that's my life. And and I have had a lot of things happen, a lot of um, trials and tribulations, and God has just took them and shaped me and helped me to be the best version of me. And now as we're entering 2020, I just, I want to be better. I want to be um, the best version of me. I want to be a better wife I want to be a better mother um, and I want to be a better friend I know uh, a lot of times um, Connor's been home four years this month and a lot of times um, we just uh, everything's about him and our lives are just centered on him and um, I know that um, there's times it shouldn't be that way and hear me out um, I know that I have put friendships on the back burner I know I have put relationships on the back burner because just all my time and energy and focus is on him and as it should be he's my child and and he needs his mama but um, but um, I have kind of let everything else go and just made him number one and everything else is just slung over here and, and it shouldn't be that way and it shouldn't um, that shouldn't that's not the right way that's not how God intended it and so I am really trying to bring balance and bring everything back together and I get overwhelmed and I get discouraged and I um, feel like I'm just I'm tr I feel like I'm trying and then I look back and I'm like you weren't trying and you were just I don't want to just go through the motions of this life I want to have relationships I want to have friendships I want to um, be someone's confident I want to be um, just a listening ear I just want to help others if I can there's just so many things I want to do aside from you know being a mother and taking care of Connor, I want to be a good employee. I want to work hard at my job. I want to, you know, I've said this so many times, but a lot of times Connor's so sick and Connor has all these specialist appointments and we're having to be out for this and out for that. And I feel like a bad employee. And I know Connor comes first. My job knows that Connor comes first and they feel the same about their kids. But I just, I just want to find balance. I just, um, don't want to feel like I'm just um, out chasing a paycheck. I want to um, make a difference in what I'm doing, and I um, I want to find balance. I want to um, feel like I'm not just oh well, I'll, I'll get a sub, or oh well, I'm, I'm just going to miss. You know, I just I'm, I'm rambling. I know that I am, and I apologize. I just 
want to do better in 2020. I want more balance. I want more um, for myself. I want more for my family. I just want to refocus and um, prioritize better. And um, y'all hold me accountable. If you know me personally and you're like, dude, she's dropping the ball. Call me out on it. Seriously. And, and, um, that's what you should do in friendships. It's about pushing the other to be the best version of their self and being better and doing better. And so anyway, guys, I just wanted to get on here and I didn't mean to ramble on and I've got on 40 different topics, but I just wanted to, wanted to tell you guys that, that God alone is faithful and he can take anything the enemy throws your way and he can turn it for good. And so I just want to get on here and say that. I hope y'all had a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. And um, just I encourage you to refocus and reprioritize in 2020. Bye, guys.